Good morning, one and all. Today, in continuation with the finance chapter, we are going to deal with the third lecture. In the front chapters, we have read regarding the types of private fee for service, post payment plans, and private third party plans, which are now discussed in this lecture. They are reimbursement to the dentist in third party plans. In the reimbursement to the dentist in third party plans is of the major forms they are currently in use. They are usual, customary and reasonable fees, table of allowances, fee schedules, discounted fee and cap ratio. In this usual, customary and reasonable fee might be a 2 marks or 4 marks question. Table of allowances, fee schedules and cap ratio are important in the examination perspective. What is usual, customary and reasonable fee? What is an usual fee? The fee usually charged for a given service by an individual dentist to private patients. That is his or her usual fee. What is customary fee? A fee is customary when it is in range of the usual fee charged by the dentist of similar training and experience for the same service within the specific and limited geographic area. What is reasonable fee? It is a mixture of the both the usual fee and the customary fee. The fee charged by the dentist for a specific dental procedure that has been modified by the nature and severity of the condition being treated and by any medical or dental complications may differ from the dentist's usual fee or the benefits administrator's customary fee. What is table of allowances? It is defined a law, a list of covered services that assigns of each service and the sum that represents the total obligation of the plan with respect to the payment of her such service, but that does not necessarily represent the dentist full fee for that service. So it does not represent the full service or the full charge or service that has been rendered. What is fee schedule? A fee schedule is defined as a list of charges established or agreed to by a dentist by specific dental services. A fee schedule is usually taken to represent the payment in full, whereas a table of allowances has just explained the notch. With a fee schedule, the dentist must accept the listed amount as payment in full or and not charge the patient at all. What is capitation? A capitation fee is usually a fixed monthly payment paid by the carrier to a dentist based on the number of patients assigned to the dentist for treatment. Capitation requires that patients be, be assigned to specific dentist or dental practices for care so that the capitation payment can be made or can be paid to the appropriate dentist or practice. What are commercial insurance companies? What are the characteristics they have? They can be more selective about the group to which the, it chooses to offer the rental insurance. They claim no obligation towards the rental health of the community. They sometimes arrange an indemnity program that provides specific cash payment reimbursement for specified covered services. Commercial insurance companies organize their levels of reimbursement differently. And commercial insurance companies do not conduct fee audits and post-treatment dental examinations. These are the types of commercial insurance companies, procedures and the characters that are they represent. Commercial insurance companies in India have been started providing the insurance to the dental procedures which do not require hospitalizations. There are two types. Standalone dental insurance plan and dental insurance cover as part of general insurance plan. Standalone dental insurance plan. This type of plan covers the expenses related to the general dental problems such as periodontitis and extraction of the permanent teeth due to ailments such as caries. This type of plan is generally provided by popular dental care product companies in association with one of the insurance companies. And the second one is dental insurance covered as a part of general health insurance plan. This type of dental insurance is provided by the general insurance companies as a part of their general health insurance schemes such as health advantage policy or student medical policy throughout 
This scheme, one can claim dental expenses along with other kind of reimbursements such as cost of medicines or hospitalizations. You can see the procedures that can be like the IHS and uh, the programs that has been provided by the employment health schemes and some of the programs that has been provided by some of the facilities like Aragya Bhattartha to the police welfare and so many. What is non-profitable health service corporations? They are of two types. According to non-profitable health service corporation finance, they are Delta Dental Plans and Blue Shield or Blue Cross that is with the association of non-profitable health service corporation. What are the dental service corporation? They are being legally constituted as non-profitable organizations incorporated on a state-by-state -state basis. It's the subject of insurance laws thereby negotiates allowing to grow. It was started in 1966 by National Association of Dental Service Plans and in later in 1969, it, the name was changed as Delta Dental Plans Association. The underlying philosophy of the dental treatment plans is to that dental practitioners can adapt their traditional patterns of practice to meet the demand for group purchase of dental care. The purpose is it is mainly a comprehensive dental program which was started for 14 years of age group and the characteristics of the dental service corporation should be professionally sponsorship, non-profit operation, participation permitted by all licensed dentists, benefits provided on a service basis and freedom of choice allowed for both patient and dentist. Who are the members? The members are the board of directors like the dentist and the representatives of the world of finance, insurance, labor and consumer groups. How the reimbursement is provided to the Delta plan that is non-profitable health service corporations by UCR fee that is usual, customary and reasonable fees. What are the functions? It ensures the quality and the care provided and keep the costs within the limits. How they have been enrolled in the Delta Dent Plan? The reimbursement to the dentist is of two types. They are the participating dentists who might enroll into it and the other one is the non-participating dentist. If the participating dentist is been doing the participation, it is duly by the licensed dentist with whom the Delta Dental Plan has a contractual agreement to render care to the covered subscribers. What are the conditions for the participating dentist? That is, he should prefill the usual customary fee and the payments are made in the 90th percentile. I will discuss in the 90th percentile in the upcoming slide and conducts the audits and post-treatment checkups and withholds some money that is goes to the Delta Capital Reserve Fund. That is, to the participating dentist. You can ask a question like how the non-participating dentist who might be not been enrolled but the reimbursement is provided. It is based on the charges that is the least percentage of the charges of the percentiles of which the service is provided. They will be given the least charges if he is a non-participating dentist or other than the law also. What is 90th percentile? It is a cumulative frequency distribution and the frequency distribution of the dentists who are participating in this service where I will tell you that is if you are planning or if you are doing <coughs> how to give the percentage of distribution of the money that is the 90th percentage if you are going to charge in a particular area of which uh, 120 members of the dentist of that area have been participating in doing or giving a service to the person for example you are doing a Restoration, which is cost, some might be like 10 dentists might charge 50 and 20 dentists might charge 60 and 40 dentists might charge 70 and 60 dentists might charge 80 and 80 dentists might charge 90 and 100 dentists might charge around 110 or 120 and more than that, that might be around 150. If you are going to calculate with the 90th percentile, you can see the in the graph like a dot of at the 90th margin where it is segregated as 120. So of which if the 10 dentists who are participating is the least percentage of the amount they are going to get out of 50 who has been a non-participating dentist. If it is being distributed by giving the 90th percentile, 120 rupees will be given to the persons who has been more 
that is been charged that is the those who are been in the reimbursement participation of the delta plan there have been more people will be getting around 120 rupees of the restoration that is been charged that is the 90th percentile where more number of persons lie in the 90th percentile region that is the percentile of a data set divided by the total frequency into hundreds so that the 90th percentile is that value below which the 90% of the observations lie so 90% of observations lie where 120 rupees is charged for the restorative procedure what are the advantages of the delta rent plans they are control of the cost quality assurance procedure no need to pay extra thereby encourages the regular attendance maintenance of good dental health all the society by various services what are the difference between commercial versus delta dental plans commercial companies are better because expertise in promotion and marketing as if they are been more in publicizing themselves presents an attractive total health packages definitely because they will have a good packages of giving render of rendering of so many services into one plan and take the risk of to offer reduced dental premiums also because of the marketing strategy they might reduce the dental premiums of the competition and the second one in the non profitable health service corporation is the blue cross or blue shield it offers limited dental coverage as a part of the medical or surgical or hospital policies has similar cost control features pioneered by the dental plans data and plans and dental coverage are limited to services provided in the hospital that is constituting the minor operation it does not put its hand into the dental prepayments procedure this is the blue cross or blue shield health corporation is a non profitable health service corporation by this i will end this lecture and in the next upcoming lectures we will be dealing regarding the prepaid group practices and health maintenance organizations Thank you.